Sagittarius 6, a game of cricket. A game of cricket is <clears throat> a symbol not only of a game, in other words, moving into group consciousness by conforming to the, the laws of the game, the rules. It is also a symbol of, of, of honor and dignity in, in one sense. The game of cricket was a very British tradition. And um, there's a, a saying in, in English society, but it's just not cricket. Uh, which means that the gentleman has betrayed his condition as a gentleman by breaking the rules. So a gentleman, in other words, a man of honor and nobility of spirit, a man of principle, doesn't break the rules to win? How undignified can you get? This is really strong in the, in the middle to upper class British psyche. And so to, to uh, con consider the, the game of cricket, we're talking about whether or not you're willing to play by the rules and to what extent you would break the rules if it was expedient to do so. So we're discussing the fundamental question here of the battle internally, the internal battle between expediency and principle, what works in practice and what actually you hold to be the right thing to do. Expediency is a short-term benefit. What is expedient now? What works now? What enables me to get what I want now? Whether or not it's legal according to the rules of the game or even according to my own sense of what's right and wrong. If I need that now, what do I have to do? That Those people are, are not of principle. Those are not principled people who, who just take what they can, when they can, how they can. That's not living by principle. And many would say that it's necessary to be that way, to just do whatever you can to win, because this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and if you don't take the advantage, somebody else will take it first. You can see why that belief has arisen, very generally in, in society that it's a competitive world and so we need to be sharp and fast and, and a little bit aggressive to take or we will be taken. That's the, the consciousness of this. And, and that indicates a fear-based approach to life. And you have to be rather careful to cement that fear-based approach to life into your sense of what is real. Because there are other people who don't live that way, they have a trusting approach to life, of a life of faith, a life lived on principle. And they've chosen to test their principles against the challenges of life by always holding true to what they believe is right, to doing the right thing, to making sure that there is a permanent state of being clear of conscience. Now, this is a very profound challenge, indeed, very profound. A rare person manages to hold to their principles all the time. And as this occurs more and more, there's this sense of nobility of spirit that develops, and a sense of deep, dignity of being, um, certain things you just won't do because it's beneath you. Now there's a word for this in Sufism, um, in a sense it's called the maqam, the, the table, that's an Arabic word which means table, the maqam that you have, which represents the, the lowest possible level that you can sink to. And some people can hurt animals and, and other people on purpose. They, they, they exist, these people. They're, they're violent and they're bullying and, and they're nasty and, and you know, they spoil things for the rest of us. But some people just could not do that. Um, you, you couldn't hurt a child. You, know, you just couldn't hurt an animal. It's just not within you to do that because your maqam is higher. And some people can... Um, even move their maqam to a level where 
they cannot sink to the level below joy. They, they only ever experience joy. And, and there's an even higher level where people can only experience bliss, ecstasy, a higher dimension of being lost to self, almost, in the presence of God. So, each person has got their own makam. And although there are perhaps seven basic levels, there are many, many gradations within that. And we can raise our game by being consistent to whatever spiritual principles we adopt as principles, as life principles, by which we live. And we stick to them, come what may, even when there's a challenge. We, we can't kill someone, for example, because they know something about us which would embarrass us. And... In a sense, because we know that we can't punish another person who gets us back, in a sense that means that we don't do anything which would generate that level of revenge. So, living by our principles is not only a sense of wanting a, a very beautiful and honourable personality, it's also a way to strengthen your resolve to do the right thing in every moment. And for us to be motivated to do the right thing when actually doing, shall we call it, the wrong thing would be more expedient. It would give us the money we need or the pleasure we want or whatever. We, we could just take what we, we need or want, despite the fact that our conscience is, is troubled by that. Um, it's, it's, it's a strong person who can actually resist that level of temptation. So we look at the idea that the game of cricket is played as a team sport and there exists this phenomenon of group consciousness. Each of us has an individual soul which is a higher level of consciousness than the ego and we can, we can move into to that level of, of soul consciousness and inspect what the ego is, is making us do. And the soul is, is the voice, or sorry, conscious, conscience is the voice of the soul, we could say. The soul wants us to do the right thing. And, and this idea of doing the right thing has got nothing whatever to do with morality. It's just, if you do that, that's the path of happiness and joy and being stable and constantly in the presence of all and everything, the, the sacredness of life. Conscience is the signpost to that life, and then getting away with it and being naughty and, and, and like, well, not naughty, but um, wrong. Naughty it doesn't mean a little bit of wrongness, it means fun, usually, against moral principles according to society, but nevertheless, you're like doing it and you know it's okay. That's kind of naughty, but being doing something you, you would be embarrassed about if you were found out. If you follow that track of embarrassment, then that actually doesn't lead you to happiness. It doesn't lead you to stability. It, it just doesn't work. It, so this whole idea of conscience is like a, a road map that the soul provides for us. Just to say, look, happiness, unhappiness. <laughs> That's what conscience is. And of course, you know, when religionists and priests and teachers and government and, and parents get hold of concepts like that, they'll distort it and misuse it and wag their finger at you and bully you and so on, sadly. But let's not throw the baby out with the bath, bath water. Conscience is what we actually use to get what we want in the long term. Now, if you're so lost in your pain and suffering and, and selfishness that you constantly operate out of what gives me the most pleasure right now, then you're probably not watching this video. The, most people, however, are like that when they're free to be. The vast majority of the world are not free to follow, follow their pleasures. They just want to get food on the table and survive the next day or two. But in the West, we've got this temptation of, of wealth. This being dealt very badly, dealt with very badly indeed. Most people are abusing their wealth and their freedom in order to get um, what they want immediately without any concern for the long term. Now, this approach does not lead to 
a group consciousness. The, the, the group consciousness is the equivalent of the soul of the group. Now, in a game of cricket, the group is an 11-man team. I suppose women play, I don't mean to be sexist here, but it's an 11-person team. And the group consciousness is how you play as a team. And actually getting into that team spirit is very much more important than winning or losing any particular match. The team spirit is created where this group of people always know that they're playing by these rules, and they always do, because it's a matter of honor to do that. And that sense of playing according to the honorable principles of a situation is what develops group consciousness. And that is higher than the individual soul. It's, it's, it's a sense of a, a step further towards awareness of the vast group consciousness which we call God.